All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got the one on the welcome to the Rick Smile of the Morning Show, the one and only Flint, the mo uh, America's beloved council member of uh, Flint, but America, because we all love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Mays. Eric Mays in the building. Hey. Ah. Man, we happy to have you this morning. It's good to be here, Mr. Smiley. Yes, Say sir. From Mr. Smiley. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Mays, what brings you to Dallas, Texas? Oh, man, I had a Flint to Dallas connection. Yes, sir. We call him Ray Ray. Right. But Ray Ray here with me now. He had me come in. They had a white party, a picnic, people from Flint and Dallas. It was kind of real good. Yeah. And so while I was in Dallas, hell, I had a guy call me, talk to him personally. That was you. Yes, sir. I said, I don't go nowhere. I don't too much leave Flint. I need to holler at Ricky Smiley before yeah. I leave Dallas and look. Because I saw the video when you got when you was at DFW Airport and said, hey, where well, Ricky Smiley? I was about to get on the plane. And I posted the video. I said, I am on my way, so I promise I'm going to find you. And then you get to Dallas, come to find out you in my building. You downstairs. Like out of ready. all the buildings downtown, you in the building. I was getting ready to board the plane yesterday and when I got the word from you. I left the airport and come back. Yes, sir. And so, hey, we have it ahead. Absolutely. So let, let's get right into it. Like, everyone loves you. Everyone knows about you. We just had people come into the studio as, before we started this interview, and they, like, saw you sitting here and lit up like a Christmas tree. I was sitting downtown <laughs> Dallas, you know, reminding me of Eddie Murphy coming to America. Yeah. This lady seen me. She looked, huh? did a double day. Oh, my God. Eric Mason, I ain't used to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People doing that. So whatever is happening in social media is just like mainstream media. Something is going on. Right. Now I'd be sixty I'm sixty four, I'd be sixty five. Right. I ain't been on the internet and I ain't been on TikTok and looking at it. But I'm smart enough to know. Something going People on. telling me, and I'm getting calls from across the country. Something's going on. Something is going on. They, 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 they like it. I've been watching you for about five years. Yeah. Uh, after, after that first incident, but I landed in that video, and then I didn't know it was more videos. I started watching all the videos, and yeah. I was like, what? Who put these videos together? Man? I don't know. It looked like it coming out of the security camera in the city, <laughs> in, in the city hall. Yeah. You see it all, though. Yeah, yeah, we got them all right now. Look at that. Well, you my main media, man. I'm, I'm going to team up with you. We're going to make this happen and communicate accurately. Um, I was listening earlier to you talking about Jason Hurts. Jason Hurts. Yes, sir. Million. We run in a city with 51 million. He could run Flint twice. No, he got more than 51 million. It's 200. Man, he got 255 million, 51 Two, per year. 51 yep. per year. Yes, sir. And that's like our general fund budget. We got our 94 million in offer funds. I'm, when I get back, I'm fighting right now for residents to benefit from that money. I want to help people get roofs on their houses, vinyl side, windows, whatever. And I'm going to see if them. Uh, Eric Macy's is on the council <laughs> of them handkerchief head Negroes. I'm going to see if they fight me on that. Now, Ms. Ms. Mays, now you said the COVID money that came into the state of Michigan, uh, how is that money being distributed uh, You know, to your constituents? That, how do they benefit? And who's trying to come in and get the money? With some of the art, some of the fight. See, we see the fights, but a lot of people don't know what the fights the are details, about. Right. The details. Um, Michigan got their allocation of COVID money, but each city, township, and village, and school boards got allocations. Our allocations for the city of Flint amounted to about $94 million. We done doled out about 30 or 40 million, and we got 50 million left. A lot of the big shots come in and, 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 and put their hands out and get that money. I'm fighting for 20 million of it to go directly to residents for a category called home improvements. There's various categories, home improvements, public safety, um, blight, you know, cleaning up. And so I wanna make sure that in the residential area, the home improvement and businesses, businesses we can allocate this money. And these are grants. This money don't have to be paid back. Mm -hmm. I got a black business I'm shooting for from old Pete used to play up at Michigan State with the team Cleveland, and he bought a downtown building. And, and not, by the way, you're a graduate of Michigan State University. I am. I was in the dorm with Magic Johnson. He came and helped me. Um, I was 
old school from 76 to 81. I was Michigan State. I was a walk-on in football because Magic and Kelsey and them had basketball wrapped up. Yeah, right. so, uh, it came out in 79. Yeah, I'm a Spartan. So, you know, my degree is political science, pre-law. Now, is that a coincidence? I worked for General Motors for mm, 30 years. I started my political career as the third vice president of the Flint branch of the NAACP, political action chairperson. I used to have to attend council meetings and report back. We dealt with police brutality issues, so forth and so on. So that was at age 21. So I've been around city council politics in Flint for over 40 years. But I was elected in uh, November of 2013. I'm in my 10th year as an elected official, and I got four more years before I have to run again. So, Ms. not not Ron, I know you got, but I, I have a, I was, somebody told me, that this is just, I'm talking to somebody from Flint. They say you're the type of council member that if somebody have a problem, they can come right, to, they, they come right to your house like 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 you so personable like like a lot of people be like i'm busy okay we'll get to it it's like you just kind of like um you ain't the type of person that's gonna go talk to my people go talk yeah, like come talk to I, me I, I think i've been successful because look at how it's set up with this technology and i'm old school <laughs> when people call me i do a three-way call with the department whether it's street maintenance whether it's garbage whether it's um whatever when they call, I say, Councilman, hold on. Then I do a three-way call and use my voice as a liaison. So the three-way calling helps my office phone is called forward to my cell phone. So I don't too much miss nothing. You can look at your cell phone and see missed calls. So I think the key to my success is um, being able to return calls and service people. Then you get in the meeting and it's a whole different dynamic. Everybody want to be the president, the vice president, the chairperson, and that internal fight blocks stuff. But I'm the senior council person. This is the third group of council people I work with, the third mayor, and so forth and so on. So um, I can't let them run me over. That's why I say when they go low, you go, go low. <laughs> <laughs> Can you shed some more light on the fire chief being terminated for not saving kids? Yeah, that's a big issue. Um, you had two black males, I think right around the ages of nine and 12, they were in a house. Two white firefighters came in, looked at the house and issued all clear. Well, one was right by the doorway in the bedroom, the other one was on the bed. Later on, about six minutes later, black firefighter come. He does a thorough search. He finds the two children. Had the first ones found them, they still might be alive to this day. That six minutes was crucial. The fire chief was fixing the fire. The um, white officers, it was in the middle of an election for Mayor Ricky, and the mayor ended up firing the black fire chief for doing the right thing. He was getting ready to fire the white folk who overlooked the kids. That has now turned into a $60 million lawsuit. And so I'm very concerned about the decisions that the mayor is presently making. I worked with the previous mayor, Karen Weaver. We came up with the strategy to declare the wild emergency. We got national recognition. President Obama at the time came in. And so when you work with three different councils and three different mayors and you see the details and the mechanics of how stuff works, you look at who's honest, who's deceitful, it makes a major difference. So I'm gonna stay the course. I'm gonna say what I gotta say. I'm gonna speak what I gotta speak. I'm gonna tell the truth. And then one day I'm gonna retire as a councilman. Man, hey, we, we are so happy to have you, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Let everybody know how they can follow you on social media. You on, are you on Facebook? I'm learning about <laughs> right, you got right. TikTok and all of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna hire you as my media consultant. Okay. Or 
I'll you be can glad give to do some it. pro bono coaching. Yes, sir. Because I'm just used to the phone. I'm old school. I'm learning. Yeah. And, um, you know, I guess there's two ways that I done found out. We've got a TikTok page. Okay. We've got a GoFundMe um, call. It's just Eric Mays. You can find this stuff yes, with sir. Eric Mays. And then the rest of the titles and so forth and so on. But you know, this is the best way to get me. Right. Eight one zero nine two two forty eight sixty. That's my cell phone. I right. <laughs> they gonna call. They gonna be calling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting calls from all across the country, man. Now, man, we love you, man. Thank you for what you do, man. Uh, you just kind of like a, a favorite there, like the internet. On, Everybody just love your spirit, your energy, your vibe. We don't know all the details of the argument, man, but you are a hilarious. Yeah, right? I don't know all the details. <laughs> One council person told me I was. Boliviating. <laughs> I ain't looked that up yet. I say I don't know about boliviating, navigating, uh, exaggerating. In this what the hell they talking about? I'm tripping. I'm tripping in them council meetings. Like, man. We absolutely love you, ladies and gentlemen. What's that? What boliviating me. I looked that word up. What is it? What was the other word? When you say point of order, point of order, point of order all point. talking should cease. Yeah. Right. And the chair should ask. What oh, so that's what that means. When you say point of order, that means that's all talking. That's the highest privilege motion in parliamentary procedure. If you in a meeting and they really act by parliamentary procedure, when you say point of order, the room should get quiet. The chair should ask what's your point. You should tell them what's in order and what's out order and then move forward. If you disagree, you can appeal the decision of the chair and so forth and so on. A point of information is a quick inquiry to the speaker. When I was in the UAW, I used to be the parliamentarian in the union meeting. And so when you got 100 or 200 people in a meeting um, and you the referee, um, I learned a lot coming out of the General Motors workers and UAW folks. But, right. So that's what that is. All across the nation, they got T-shirts now with maids on it. Point of order. I'm like, y'all do what y'all want. Everybody have fun. But I want them to know, when you say point of order, all talking should cease. And they should try to find out what technicality you're talking about. And, and again, point of information, because I heard you say that. Before. It's a quick inquiry to the speaker to clarify something. If you say it's 50 million that we're trying to spend for the residents, and I know it's 80 million, I should say point of information, do you mean 50 million or 80 million? But I can't take the floor, it's a quick inquiry. Mm. Oh, okay. what's the other one he always say that, that I, what's, what's the other one he, uh, Ted, well, I can, cause I wanna know what all this stuff means because we hear it and uh, you, I- I feel the ruling of the chair. Yes. Yeah, when you appeal the ruling of the chair, if I say point of order, you forgot to read the minutes and the chair say, well, I ain't going to read them now. I read them later. I can appeal any ruling of the chair, but I have to do it immediately. What I'm in court for, we had a bogus rule that some of our meetings go on four or five hours. And if I want to get up, I'm old. I'm the oldest one there. If I want to get up to go to the restroom or whatever, I have to ask permission of the chair to be excused. So I got arrested after getting permission and coming back. You can't come back. I'm like, yes, you can. Well, I have to appeal the ruling of the chair. You gave me permission. I can get up. I can come back. That's in court right now. Next Tuesday, um, we'll have a hearing because the chair at that time, the white lady, Miss Herkin, wrote it <laughs> on video. And then she get in court, raise the right hand, swear to tell the truth, and say she didn't excuse me. Well, just like them police cases, we got the video evidence. Now, the other white lady that you put out, yeah, thrown out. The one who gave me the finger. <laughs> she was out of there. I wanted to cuss her out, man. Yeah. How you gonna give me the finger? I'm chairing the meeting in the council meeting. Right. And you had them come That's get out, out of there. That's some nasty. 
all white folks ain't nasty, but them was a couple nasty. She didn't win. She right. gone. Some of them folks who I be arguing with didn't win really late. That's not the one you said called the two nasty women. Yeah. One of them got the worst attendance record of anybody else. worthy. Kay Fields. Look, she on that video of that. She gone. Well, she, so, so she gone. Yeah, she gone. So, so you done got her out. What you done did to get her out? I went over there and knocked some doors and told on her. <laughs> <laughs> Old school. Now, 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 what about him? Who is he? Cool? Do we I'm need to like him? Was. He reminded me of Santa Claus, but he teamed up with Kate Fields. So he teamed up with her. He gone too. Now, now, now what about her? <laughs> She's still there. That's my main role. Now she go. She go. And what about? Now, I saw you and him with the ponytail get the argument. Yeah, he was, but then he. He do better playing that guitar than he do in politics. But y'all cool he, now. He gone. He gone. He gone. So you had something to do to get him out of there. I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> but but who is that though? Oh, that's that man. That's that man. <laughs> Who's that man? Mama. What's your name <laughs> is? What's your name is? That's me. That's Mama. my blue man. I, I had on black. But Ricky, you done give you done give me some gear. Oh, that's nice. I'm on your mother. When I'm coming into the um, council meet looking like you. Yes, sir. Now, I get through out with this. Uh, I'm going to send you one. I'm, I'm, I, I got another one for you. I'm going to send it Man, to you. And I'm going to talk about it. Point of order. Y'all see my giant <laughs> 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 The Ricky Smiley morning show. Hey. I'm going to wake him up when I get back. Yes, sir. Oh, God. Eric Mays, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, y'all missing all the Yes, sir. Yes. That's good, man. Bill.